Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we will be looking at probably one of the best $700 PC builds out there. This time we're also going to be including AMD's new B550 motherboard which is awesome given the price range of this build. All the links to each part shown in this video is down in the description or you can just go ahead and click the first link which is to my kit page so you can view all the parts at once and will even localize the Amazon links for you. If you want a step by step guide on how to build this PC then just check out my last video. It's a $600 PC build but the steps are literally the exact same. Before we jump right into it, I would appreciate it if you could drop a like on this video. It really helps out the channel and consider subscribing if you like more content like this. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting off with the processor, I've decided to go with the tried and trusted Ryzen 5 3600. I've used this in many of my builds and at this price range of $200, it's really hard to beat. What's neat is that it also comes with the cooler, which is pretty decent and gets the job done so you don't have to worry about that. In terms of performance, the Ryzen does not disappoint. Its competition in terms of price is the Intel i5-9600, which gets outperformed by the Ryzen 5 3600 in almost all tasks that takes advantage of the multi-cores. This is because the Ryzen 5 has 6 cores and 12 threads, whereas the Intel only has 6 cores and 6 threads. For gaming benchmarks, stick around as I'll show them later on in the video. For the motherboard, I've chosen the Gigabyte B550M DS3H. It's a small form factor micro ATX motherboard, which is neat because you can either pair this up in a micro ATX case or a normal sized ATX case. I think this is the best budget option coming in at a price of around $94 depending on when you purchase it because it's got everything you need like two M.2 slots, four DDR4 slots and even RGB connectors if needed. Moving on to RAM, I decided to pick 16 gigs of G-Skill Rip Jaws with a clock speed of 3200 MHz. It comes in a set of two 8 gig sticks so it can take advantage of the dual channel mode. And I know this RAM is not always available on Amazon, so I'll also leave some very good alternatives that work just as good. As for storage, I'm using Team Group's GX to 512 SSD. Although if you have a bit more money to spare, I would actually recommend you getting the Crucial MX550, the 500 gig, as this includes a DRAM module inside it, which will be even faster than the DRAMless SSD mentioned earlier. And moving on to the graphics card, the Nvidia GTX 1660 Super. The version I have is the Gigabyte OC Gaming Edition with a triple fan setup, but most third party cards are good options and this only retails for around $239 and it's an absolute beast for its price. This will achieve very high frames per second in all titles at 1080p and very reputable frames at 1440p. Here's some gaming benchmarks so you can check it out for yourself. Now moving on to power, I'm using the Hyper-K 500 watt power supply from FSP. You probably won't find this on Amazon as it is an OEM brand and often gets rebranded as Cooler Master and EVGA. So a good alternative is the Thermaltake Smart 500 watt 80 plus certified power supply. And lastly but not least is the beauty of this build, the case, the Cooler Master MB311L. It's got a large front mesh panel for maximized airflow and comes pre-installed with two 120mm addressable RGB fans. It's also got a tempered glass side panel and it's pretty roomy inside compared to other micro ATX cases. Another good alternative is the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. I've heard a lot of good things about this case, but also remember that you don't have to get a micro ATX case, you can just get a normal sized ATX case like the Fantex Clip series or the NZXT H series as the motherboard and all the parts will still fit in those cases. I will also be pairing up this case with Be Quiet's Silent Wings 2. This is a really good case fan coming in at only $14. And with that being said, that wraps up this build. 
If I add up all the parts with the pricing at the time of making this video, this bill comes to a total of around $739, which is a really good price for high-end gaming at 1080p and even 1440p. So make sure to visit my kit page so you can view this build as well as all my previous builds and you can simply buy everything off Amazon. I'll also leave individual links and it will be regularly updated. Make sure to smack that like button and subscribe for more content and as always, thanks for watching.